Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have another set of great stories about crazy people and their revenge for you to enjoy. Subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. To the story. Cost a timeshare scam all their sales for lying and make $5,000 doing it? This is the story of how a friend of mine nuked a timeshare scam a few years back and took them to the cleaners. Background. Friend of mine is a big dude, maybe 6'3 and 250 pounds, and a no-nonsense military NCO. Likes his booze and likes to have a good time when he's off the clock. We'll call him JB. One day, he got one of those win-a-free-week-long-cruise-all-expenses-paid phone calls. He decides to look into it because why the hell not? Calls the number back and gets a lady on the other end who gives him the rundown of how the cruise thing works. Sounds too good to be true, so he asks her, is there some sort of timeshare bullcrap or other strings attached to this? She assures him that no, there is not. He goes for it and signs up for a cruise a few months later during a block of leave. Revenge In order to claim the cruise, he and his wife had to show up a day early to a hotel near the port where the cruise was departing. Room is paid for already as part of the cruise package. They show up the day before and check in with the front desk. The concierge asked if they would like to upgrade to the VIP package for $20, which includes free drinks at the hotel bar. F yes, he takes the upgrade and heads to the bar. JB's a social drinker, and when he gets liquored up, he starts socializing with other bar patrons. He finds out they're also there for the cruise, and that there's a mandatory presentation the next morning that everyone has to go to. JB starts to smell a rat. This sounds an awful lot like a timeshare scam. Well, he's having none of it, and being good and drunk, he rallies all the cruise goers around him, about 30 people, gets up on a table and delivers a William Wallace-style speech about how they don't have to deal with these timeshare scam artists. Within minutes, he's whipped the crowd into a frenzy and convinced everyone not to buy into whatever the presentation is selling. Sure enough, the next morning, everyone shows up to the presentation to claim their cruise. They're told the tickets will be given to them at the conclusion of the presentation. JB is drunk again because, well, free booze, and he's on leave. JB is drunk again because, well, free booze, and he's on leave. JB starts to go back into Braveheart mode, getting real loud about how it's a scam, and he was told explicitly that there's no timeshare bullcrap attached to this cruise. Well, the timeshare people instantly recognize JB is bad for business, so they usher him away from everyone else into a side room and try to talk sense into him. TS equals timeshare scammer. TS, sir, this is a mandatory presentation. We cannot give you a ticket for the cruise unless you go to this. JB. Bullcrap! Y'all specifically said there was no timeshare involved in this cruise. TS. Sir, we have all our calls recorded. It was very clearly outlined that you'd need to listen to this presentation. JB. Good. Let's pull up my recording and you show me what they said. At this point, a big, beefy security-looking dude, not with the hotel, clearly a part of the timeshare company, tries to intervene because JB is getting louder and more angry. S equals security. S, putting a hand on JB's shoulder. Sir, we're going to have to... JB, back up, mother effer. I'll rip off your head, crawl down your neck, and out your butthole. He sure has a way with words. S meekly turns tail and runs. At this point, it's clear they can't let JB into the presentation or else he'll ruin everything, so the director of the program pulls JB into his office, basically tells JB that they listened to his call, and he's right. The lady had said there was no timeshare involved. The director admits that they aren't able to print his ticket until 12.30 p.m., the time the presentation was scheduled to end because the company locks them in order to force people to go to the presentations. He says, come back at 1230, I'll have your tickets, and I'll upgrade you to premium for free if you just don't go anywhere near our presentation. Too easy. JB does exactly that and then heads to the boat. Premium was like the best cabin on the boat with, again, free booze and all sorts of awesome upgrades, including $5,000 on his account. Turns out everyone else had to sit through the timeshare presentation and almost missed the boat because it went so long. Not a single person bought a timeshare, but the presenters spent hours trying to convince them to. Eventually, they gave up and handed everyone their tickets in defeat. 
In total, they made $0 in sales and lost another $5,000 to JB's free premium upgrade. And our next story. Landlord tries to keep us in a mold house. We get his place condemned by the city. I've lived in a lot of awful places throughout my college years, but this was one of the big ones. It's pretty long, just want to warn you. I'd recently moved into a house with two other girls. It wasn't the best house, but seemed to look okay for a college apartment. One of the girls had a friend who had lived there before and told us that the landlord was sexist and kind of a jerk, but usually meant well and it was decent rent. I'll be referring to him as dumb a landlord. We were all broke, so we decided to sign a lease. I should have realized the warning signs when dumb A landlord wanted to sign it in a big boys, after he'd just eaten dinner there. And the leasing agreement looked like he chopped it up from other pictures of lease agreements on Google. We also found this apartment as an ad off of Craigslist. Things were fine for a few months. I was living alone until the next school year would start and wasn't home all the time since I would go over to my boyfriend's a lot and sleep over. It was a split house with an apartment in the basement, and ours was on the first floor. It wasn't long until I started to notice things happening. We'd get a good amount of rain, since we're in the Midwest, by some big local lakes and it was springtime, we'd get a good amount of water and the concrete steps to the house would consistently fill up with water I had to jump over. It'd disappear overnight. It also started to get a little bit of a musty smell in the house, and I'd started coughing and sneezing all the time but didn't know why. Soon the other girls moved in and we started having some difficulties with dumb A landlord. He wouldn't tell us when he came over to check on the property. He said he did this to keep up on looks and mow the lawn, but he did it way too often for any of us to be okay with it. He would argue with us about having a copy of our own lease. He'd yell at us to give him his rent payments in cash, especially before going to his cabin up north with his girlfriend. But the biggest of all was that we were having problems with mold and he did not care. For a while, we hadn't talked to the people in the basement apartment until everyone started having problems with dumb A landlord. We hear them arguing and yelling down below about as often as we would upstairs. But they were in a hellhole. Everything they owned had mold growing on it. They had bugs everywhere, earwigs, beetles, ants, you name it. They were constantly throwing away their clothes, dishes, furniture, even their college papers and homework since it was all growing mold. They spent money on plastic bins to hold most of their important items, but even those would get moldy. We also found out they were supposed to have another roommate down below, but she couldn't live there with her allergies to mold after signing a lease agreement. We also found out that dumb A landlord verbally abused her and her mother on the phone to the point where they were crying and she couldn't get out of the lease. She ended up paying for two places every month so that she didn't have to live there, because he wouldn't let her break her lease and didn't care. Upstairs wasn't as bad as the basement, but it wasn't good either. All of us were coughing more and more each month. We'd wake up coughing in the middle of the night and we were getting really sick. We tried to air out the house as best we could, but nothing helped. I ended up getting a severe case of strep throat so bad that every swallow I took made my eyes water and made me verbally make noise from the pain. I tried to ask the doctor I went to if he could prove that this was mold later, but he unfortunately couldn't give me a solid statement on it. Me being a vocal, neutral good person, who was also going to school to be an architect, tried to explain to him what was going on in the house. No air circulation, his concrete steps and foundation walls were not sealed, so all of the water I'd have to jump over was most likely going into the basement walls, causing most all of the mold. We also found a few areas on the roof that needed patching since we noticed some leaks, among other things, and the basement apartment had cheap patio doors for their only means of entrance and exit, which would consistently be up against water when it rained, adding to the problem. Oh, smart, dumb A landlord decided that we were all just girls complaining about silly things that didn't mean anything, so he brushed us off and said we were fine, even though I had told him that I was learning about these things in school and knew what I was talking about. He wouldn't let us out of the lease, as hard as we tried, so all of us girls in both apartments decided we would get out if it was the last thing we did. Then we began researching all of the legal apartment and tenant information for our state and city to get out. We were paying for attorney fees, started taking pictures of the mold upstairs and downstairs that we could find, talking with several different city staff and police, and started compiling this into a nice document. 
After deferring my rent payments to get a copy of the lease agreement from Dumb A Landlord, we could finally take a look at our legal document and use that further to get out. We were also working with another landlord at a renting company in town, who I'll call Good A Landlord. He was thankfully doing his best to get us out of that crap hole and into his apartment. Through him, we'd get all of the legal ins and outs of the renting business and he'd help us find a loophole. Then after months and months of arguments, money and research, we found it. If we sent in a mold test to a research lab and it was over the limit of what was inhabitable, we could get out. It was safe to say we had a pretty good idea that it was over the limit. The test came back a few days later, and we sent that off to the city, including our nice document of pictures, statements, and leasing agreements. Not even four hours went by and we got a call from the city. Our house was so full of mold that we were to move out of the apartment within 24 hours, and it was to be condemned. We were ecstatic. All that hard work had finally paid off, although it was horrifying to know that the mold count was so high. The mold researcher who'd been in the business for more than 30 years had not once seen a place with higher mold count than this house. Yes, this included black mold. Fast forward to us happily packing up in our house, all of our parents getting us out together and moving us into the apartment that good A landlord kept open for us to move into. And poor old dumb A landlord sobbing in our driveway as we happily stacked boxes into cars, complaining that he should have paid more attention and listened to us. This was his girlfriend's property and she's going to dump him. We all took a picture the next day, smiling in front of the condemned signs. It's still one of my favorite pictures to this day. Serves him right for not listening to his tenants. I really like that you took a photo by the condemned sign at the end. Well done. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.